Hi YouTube, today um, I'm back again. This is um, Baby Zanae. Today I'm going to discuss with you some things that people never really mention when they're going through their breast cancer journey and I figured i touch base with you. Um, it's very important that you have really good health insurance. Um, I guess nobody knows exactly if they're going to get cancer or when they're going to get cancer. But it pays to have really good health insurance because the bills are astronomical. I'm just going to tell you now. Like, I haven't even been through chemo yet. And I understand that chemo costs about $100,000. And then I'm going to have to have reconstruction surgery after that. So that's about another ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. So, so far... My out-of-pocket expenses are around $18,000, and um, my insurance company kind of paid the rest, but I pretty much had to fight them every step of the way, and hopefully you won't have the problems that I'm having. I happen to have Cigna Insurance, and they are the worst company to have, for women anyway, if you have breast cancer, um, because like I said in my other videos, they um, do not do diagnostic mammograms. Basically what that means is they'll cover your preventative mammograms so that means that if you were having a routine mammogram they would do it. But in my case my doctor felt a lump and asked to have the mammogram done and they denied it. So basically they wasn't going to cover me because I had a lump. And then my doctor wanted me to have a mammogram every three months after that lump was found. They denied that as well, stating that that's just diagnostic. Well, guess what? If my insurance company had went ahead and let me do my diagnostic mammograms, I believe that my, my cancer wouldn't have progressed as fast as it did. But um, I'm now in stage two. And I had to cover my mammograms myself because Cigna would not pay for it. Um, and it's a nonsense, nonsense because now they have to pay over $100,000 in chemo. So to me, it makes more sense to pay $300 and some odd dollars for um, a mammo than have to pay $100,000 in um chemo and other medical bills and hospitalization costs and all those surgeries, like seriously. Um, Cigna, if you're listening, you really need to wake up. I'm like, I don't know who makes the decisions over there, but it's absolute nonsense. Cigna has also denied most of my um, tests that my doctor has ordered. Like I've been having like a lot of bone pain. I have um, some tailbone pain. They refuse to have an MRI done on that. Um, they refused my PET scan, which would allow them to scan my body and see if there was cancer in any other parts of my body. Um, this booklet right here houses all of my bills. This is a three-inch binder. And all of my medical bills are in here. They're all in here. And I'm getting bills from the lab. This is to give you some idea what you're going to get. I'm getting bills from the lab. Um, once Cigna pays, and then they designate what I owe. I don't know if you can see that or not. So I owe 358 on that one. And then I have radiology bills. The portions that they didn't pay. Um, this is part of one of my mammograms. Another radiology bill. Um, I just want to just show you the ridiculous, ridiculousness. You know, I got a lot of these. The ones that say past due. Um, and I keep them in a, in a binder in order of date of service. Because when you want to fight with the insurance company, which I have to do a lot of. Um, like, my insurance company is supposed to like pay 80%. Do you see here? That's not 80%. It says you saved 53%, which means you didn't pay the 80% that you I was promised for you to pay. Um, and you have to constant. I have to constantly fight with Cigna to get these bills paid. See this right here? This is my denial for my PET scan. They denied it. Like we're not paying for that. 
Okay, so you don't, they wanted me to be in stage four cancer before they would cover my pet skin. I mean, stage four, that's like end of life. Like, just kill me now. Um, it's just total ridiculous, ridiculousness, if that's even a word. But this is what I had to go through. And this is what you would have to go through if you don't have enough coverage or if you are uh, Cigna patient. I'm just saying Cigna is just not beneficial to women. Um, please share the story with people that you know that may have Cigna insurance. And if you're an employer and you have women working for you, don't use Cigna to cover your employees. It's ridiculous. I mean, stuff happens. Look at this bill. $10,000. They haven't paid anything on it. So, this is what I have to deal with. But, I wish you all the best of health. And I just wanted to bring the forefront, forth, in the forefront, the medical expenses that you also have to endure. So, I have to worry about my medical expenses. I'm on disability. I get less than 50% of my monthly income because they still take out all of my my health insurance and all of the other deductions that they normally took out of my full-time check. And I'm only left with barely $300 a month. Then I have $18,000 for bills. And then the government only gives you FMLA for 12 weeks. And I've had four surgeries already trying to get the cancer out. I've already used up my 12 weeks. So now my job's in jeopardy. So if I lose my job, I don't have any health insurance. So you can just see how cancer just seems to ruin every aspect of your life. If I don't have a job, I don't have health insurance, I'm not going to get my medical treatment, I lose my house, I lose my car. It's just one thing on top of another. It just builds and builds and builds. But that's all for now. I'll be back at you.